Hello? Hi, Danny, it's Meredith. Oh, hey, what's up? Well, they're pretty. Well, I wanted to comment because you've been emailing a lot, and you, you know, I know you want to talk about your case. Um, just wanted to make sure we had a chance to do that. Cool. Um, so, I was wondering if you could file motions to dismiss the case under right to a fast and speedy trial. Yeah, so I know that we talked about this before. No, yeah. Speedy trial right only attaches once you plead not guilty in the case. Oh, I pleaded so not guilty at the beginning. So you haven't entered a not guilty plea in the case yet? Um, well, that sounds like your fault. Well, it's not my fault. Um, I'm happy if you want to enter a not guilty plea, we can go ahead and do that. I um, entered a not guilty plea at the, the beginning. Okay. You know, there's no record of that in the case file. If well, that doesn't sound record, like my fault. Record. I told you not guilty. I told the last public defender not guilty. Yep, and, and once you declare that before the court, then the speedy trial clock starts running. Well, it sounds like you guys aren't doing your job. How is that my problem? Well, I, I don't think it's anybody's problem. I just want to make sure... It's, it, it's a big problem. Okay. What is it you, you, you would like to enter an unfilled complaint your next hearing? Is that what you're wanting to do? I was hoping that you could do your job that I pay you for. That's what I was hoping. Instead of stalling and sitting on my, my case. Job and I'm, I'm providing, well, I'm doing my job of providing you with excellent representation, Vinny. It's obviously pretty upsetting for me to get some of the messages you've been sending me, which are which are accusing me of a lot of things that I haven't done. Well, what have you um, done? I really want to keep working hard on your case. And, um, well, Vinny, I think the process is going through quite literally thousands of pages of records in your case. Um, to try to see what we can negotiate with um, the prosecution. I'm not negotiating. The, they well, didn't do anything. Well, Danny, will you let me finish my sentence? Okay. I'm trying to negotiate to try to see if I can get all or parts of your case dismissed, you know, based on the information that we have in discovery and the information that we have in the record. So that's what I've been doing on your case. Um, or if we cannot get to a negotiated dismissal on the case, then we can talk about um, what that means in terms of next steps and whether we want to send the case for trial. Um, and that's what we discussed when, um, when we met in person, that's what we discussed in the phone. So I've been doing exactly what we had discussed in our previous conversation. Okay. Um, so what are you looking through? What papers are you looking through? Yeah, so remember we talked about this, that we have been requesting records from all of the places that you've gotten treatment in the past, um, and places that we've um, been getting from presently to try to get information um, that we can give to the prosecutor to let them know what was really going on here, which was not that we were doing anything criminal. Um, and, you know, sometimes what will happen is that the teleprosecutor that if somebody's in treatment, uh, we can use that as something to ask for a dismissal or a lesser plea uh, based on sort of continued access to, to treatment and health care. So that's something that we've been exploring in your team. Um, you know, obviously I think one option would be to try to close it out with time first because I hear you that you were in custody for a long time in this case and a lot of things happened that weren't there. Um, so we're also seeing if we can find any basis for that um, in terms of the information that we have on the case. So, um, did you see the parts where I was court ordered treatment and injections and I almost died? So, I, is that when you were at CMHAP? Um, Dr. Aaron Townsend from All Health Network was court ordering me treatment and uh, monthly injections. And I was allergic to the injections, and I almost died. And then I went to community. Re and then I went to community reach center CRC with Counselor Kelly at Stages Mental Hospital, and she said all the other diagnoses are misdiagnoses and/or slash false diagnoses. And then she re-diagnosed me with trauma-based PTSD. And then she suspected my mother of having Munchausen by proxy disease and or slash fictitious by proxy disorder, meaning she tries to fool everybody about me being more mentally ill than I really am so that she can get sympathy from others. And I also have... Mm -hmm. It's almost like they sophisticated computer technologies, the programs... Did you see that part? Yeah, 
Neiman today, we're just catching up. You just cut off there. I can oh, say I, I also had and then you cut off. Okay. You're cutting out again. So, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but my life's at stake here. I hear you. I I know, and that's why, you know, like I've always said to you, this case is a priority for me, and I, I'm trying to do everything I can to represent you in this case. I appreciate it. Um... So you're saying that fast and speedy trial doesn't happen because I didn't plead guilty or not guilty? So you, you always have a right to a speedy trial. The way that it works is that once you enter a not guilty plea in front of the court, the speedy trial clock starts running, and they have six months from the date that that not guilty plea is entered to bring you to trial. So if they didn't bring you to trial within those six months, then we could file a motion to dismiss based on a speedy trial violation. So I've been sitting in a year telling you that I didn't do anything wrong and I've been telling you guys to plead not guilty and that's my fault that you guys won't no, listen to me? No, I don't think I've said anything was your fault. No, no one said anything was your fault, Benny. Do you believe I'm innocent in this? Wholeheartedly? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well... I mean, this has been going on for a year. Yeah, I know. Can you hear me? I think you made yeah. it cut out again. Yeah, I heard you. Okay. I know it's been going on for a long time. You know, it got dragged out because of the competency uh, issues that were filed early on in your case. Um, so right now we're at the second arraignment, and... You know, certainly if um, if we're not able to get the DA to come to something reasonable on this, we can certainly set the case for trial and then go from there. The shin competency should have been it's restored within three months. Um, you don't have to be restored uh, within three months. Well, they have to file updates on restoration periodically, but the timeline for when a case gets dismissed based on competency, it depends on the charges that were filed. Um, and they don't have to do it within three months under statute. How long does it take to restore someone's competency? Well, it depends on the person. I mean, in your, in your case, they, um, they filed saying you had been restored to competency um, as of February of this year. Um, and then the mental health day was listed in March. But, you know, sometimes it's a few weeks for some people, sometimes it's years. It really just depends on the person. Yeah, I sat in a jail cell, a holding cell for nine months, and then two weeks in the mental hospital, my competent we see was restored. Mm-hmm. So, what was the point of all that nine months? What was I waiting for? Well, what, do you, what do you mean by that? I sat in your guys' DCSO facility for nine months, waiting for my competency to be restored. Why? Exactly. It's because there are very long waiting lists at CMHIP, the hospital where they administer restoration treatment. Um, and nine months, unfortunately, is, is not an atypical wait. That, uh, that happens quite frequently. I see the only people messing up about all this stuff is all you guys. What do you mean by that? Well, the cops almost killed me multiple times. Cruel and unusual punishment. You guys are attacking the Geneva Convention. Human rights. American rights. It looks like you guys what are the criminals. Say, what do you mean to say you guys? I'm not a cop, Benny. I have not everybody to working for the DCSO facility. And everybody that refuses right. to do their jobs except for the deputies that are going around arresting all my people for no reason. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like you guys are the criminals. Well, when you say you guys, that makes it sound like you think that I work for DCSO, which I don't. Okay, then I don't mean you. I mean DCSO. They look like criminals to me, don't you? Okay. I, I agree that they do things all the time that are extremely criminal. 
Well, why aren't is why isn't anybody reporting this? Why isn't there an investigation? I mean, the building's not even up to code. I don't know why that is, Benny. Well, why doesn't somebody do something instead of putting all my people into a POW camp? That's a really good question. You know, obviously I represent people in their criminal cases. I don't have the ability to sue the CCSO. That's a totally separate area of the law. I'm um, not asking you know, anybody to sue. I'm, like that, but I'm not asking anybody to sue. I'm asking you all to get an investigation on the facility so that you guys can properly do your jobs. Okay. That has nothing to do with money or suing or legal terms. You guys need to be reported to higher government officials so that they can come into their own government facility and fix all your guys' fuck ups. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are committing war crimes inside of that facility. If the UN gets a hold of this, the whole government's going to be on trial. And I'm pretty okay. sure that our government wouldn't appreciate our own people being treated like this in their own facility. Mm -hmm. You guys got veterans in there being treated like criminals by a bunch of deputies claiming to be sergeants. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, I agree with you that there is a lot of injustice carried out by DCSO and by the folks who run the jail. You know, obviously my job is to represent you in this case. And as far as representation in this case is, I want to make sure we're on the same page with, you know, the goal with what we're doing here, um, which is to see if we can get um, some sort of resolution short of trial. And if we can't, then we can make a decision about whether we want to go to trial in this case. So who do I talk to about getting an investigation on the DCSO facility? I guess it's my job. Yeah, I don't know who the perfect person would be to do that. I think it depends a little bit on what your, your goal would be there. Um, but I, you know, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Well, couldn't you just call the FBI and say, hey, there's something wrong with this facility. You might want to check it out. Would that work? Uh, that's not something that I... Necessarily would be well, if, if do, I but, wanted to do uh, it, if I wanted to do it, do you think that would work? I honestly don't know if that's how the FBI initiates investigations. Um, you know, I, I can't give you advice on that. Oh, um, well, who could I talk to about it? I don't know. Oh. Um, well, I was also wondering about some other stuff. Um, what does hearsay mean? So hearsay is an out-of-court statement offered for the truth of the matter asserted. What it means is, if it's a statement that somebody is not saying in open court, it can't usually come into evidence if it's being offered to prove the truth. So um, there are exceptions to the hearsay rule, but that's the general rule. So it's practically like trying to enter new spoken word evidence to the court without the proper channels? Um, yeah, basically. Okay. Um, what other stuff? Let me see. I, I emailed it to you. I thought it'd be easier to, to, to read it and stuff. My phone's not... Man. Um, I can't... My phone won't work. Uh, okay, man, if I do that. Okay, there we go. Alright. I'm, I'm just trying to open the email I sent to you so I can read the questions I asked. top of my head. Hmm. 
So did you talk to the DA? got a new counselor and I'm supposed to talk to him Wednesday at 2 o'clock for my first appointment and I've been requesting since 2020 to get uh, you know DMT and EMDR and uh, all that like serious like counseling and stuff you know mm -hmm. but they just haven't done anything about it for two or three years now so I've been trying to get, yeah. uh, you know, some serious help, but they won't do anything. So that's where that's yeah. at. Yeah, and where uh, is your counselor out of? It's still all health, or is it somewhere else? Yeah, it's still all health network. His name should be Jonathan. I can look it up here. His yeah, the new one's name is Jonathan Lusier. L U S S I E R. Jonathan okay. Leisure? I'm not sure how to say that. And yeah, my first appointment was last week, and I thought that it was on Thursday, and then I looked at the paper and it was Tuesday, so I missed it. So I called back Wednesday and had a new appointment for this Wednesday. So I haven't had my first appointment with the new one yet. But the reason I left the last one was because she, was, she wasn't even giving me counseling. She would call me once a week. And just bullshit with me. So I said that I needed to get some serious treatment for my issues. And I also needed some serious, like, intervention on my family and their mental illnesses, but nobody would ever do anything, so. Yeah. And are you okay with me telling the DA about um, you're going to John Bush now and you're doing sessions with him? Yeah, that's fine. Um, and we could maybe talk once you met with him too about whether he'd be able to write a letter just sort of confirming some of the treatment that you're doing with him. Okay. Um, do you want me to give you his phone number? Sure. I'll probably ask for a release of information from you, but I'm, I'm happy to get his phone number. What is it? Um, 720 Okay. And and that's actually the second question I was asking. Um how did the investigation go? In terms of us trying to get in contact with Brittany? Well like in and all of it. I'm not sure how the investigation process works, so I'm like I don't know, you said last time that you were waiting for an investigation or something, so I don't remember exactly what you said, yeah. but... Yeah, so the way that it works is that we have um, investigators in our office who are assigned to different um, investigator tasks for a given case. So, one of the main things that the investigators are doing is in getting all of those records um, from different, um, different places that you've been getting treatment um, at. I also know that the investigator has been trying to reach Brittany um, and did speak with her a little bit about what happened in the case, um, as well as the mom, who's also a witness. So it's something that the investigator is doing to get additional information beyond what the police say uh, to, to get further uh, information about the case. So that's what the investigator of your case has been doing, has been talking to those witnesses and then also uh, getting records to try to uh, build up more information about your case. Okay. Um, has anything like happened with that or? So yeah, there's, so there's definitely some helpful information in um, the interview with your mom in terms of, you know, her saying we had permission to be in the house, um, and that you had the, you know, garage door access and everything like that, which is very useful in terms of trying to beat the burglary charge in this case. Um, 
you know, I think that you know, we can talk more about this if we're in a position where we are going to trial on this. The, you know, the medicine is a little bit more tricky because it's very subjective in terms of what different people thought was going on, right? So obviously you weren't trying to scare Brittany or anything like that, but she's probably going to testify that she thought you were and that she was scared when that happened. Um, so it doesn't mean that we can't beat that charge, but it's a, it's a difficult um, statute just because it turns a lot on what different people perceive as happening. Does that make sense? Right. So, like, what does menacing really mean? Like, is it the intent to, like, I, I don't understand that charge. Yeah, so I can, um, I just read you the statute. Okay. Um, so, there's misdemeanor menacing and there's felony menacing, which is why, you know, we've been trying to see if we can get a misdemeanor in this case just because it's a lot lower of a charge. Uh, you know, menacing basically is, um, that you're knowingly putting somebody um, in fear of, well, let me always read your statute. If by threat or physical action, you knowingly place or attempt to place another person in fear of imminent serious bodily injury, it's a felony if it's committed by the use of a deadly weapon or any article used or fashioned in a manner to cause a person to reasonably believe that the article is a deadly weapon. So, again, there's like a lot of wiggle room there, right? Because, of course, what we're going to say is that you weren't knowingly trying to place Brittany in fear. You were just trying to show her that it was a fake gun. Um, and, you know, the issue is obviously that it's going to be up to the jury to sort of determine that really tricky question of intent. But that's what the statute says. Okay. Um, did you see the evidence that I've been looking for? Um, they do have a video footage of me saying what happened. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, we have obviously on our body cam that I said to you, and, you know, that is going to be a trial. We're going to be really clear that that's, you know, the fact that happened, that that's been what you said happened from the whole time. Um, and again, it, it would be sort of up to a jury to determine, you know, what, you know, whether that was or was not your intent. Um, but that's absolutely the defense that we present if we go to trial. Um, and, and I was looking through some of the documents, and they have like my middle name is Michael and stuff. Yeah, I, I saw that you brought that up. Sometimes that just happens. There's an error for whatever reason um, in terms of what gets transcribed. It's not necessarily a basis for a motion to dismiss or anything like that. Right. Um, but that's what seems like it's somebody else that they're talking about. Right. So it's just like a typo kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, that would be my guess. I, it didn't look to me in any of the docs like it was um, like it was referring to another person or anything like that. Right. Yeah, they must have just messed up that. Um, yeah. I was also wondering if if the investigator got a hold of the community reach center um, parts. Of my mental illness? Let me see, yeah. We did get the community reach record. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we got York and Colorado Hospital, Highland Behavioral, Corner and Parker, Castle Rock Adventist, Community Reach Center, Littleton Adventist, Fort Logan, Aurora Mental Health, Denver Springs. Right. Um, is there any, like, a uh, documentation of what Kelly and me did? I can you reach? Yeah. Um, yeah, there is, um, I don't need to go to the media about that, so I don't know how detailed the notes are, but I can certainly look. Is there something specifically that you want us to get documentation on? Well, yeah, I thought that um, the part where Kelly was suspecting my mother of having fictitious disorder, I don't know, I thought that might be helpful, right? Okay. Yeah, and, and she suspected my mother, but uh, my mother would have to go get uh, evaluated in order to be diagnosed with that mental illness. But it, it basically means that she tries to uh, deceive others about my mental illness so that she can get sympathy. It's like a mental illness. Like the last, like the biggest like the poster child of that mental illness was, I forget their name, but they've made a documentary where the mother 
kept the daughter in a wheelchair her whole life, even though she could walk perfectly fine, and then she'd feed her poison and soup and stuff to make her sick. And her daughter ended up uh, getting her boyfriend to kill her mother, and she went to jail for like 10 years, and her boyfriend went to jail for like life and stuff. And that's like the poster child of yeah. that mental illness. It's pretty much the caregiver yeah. making the person they're caring for sicker and more iller than they really are. Yeah. Oh, well, I can see again if you're, what kind of activities there might be a dying on record. Okay. Um, could, could I get a hold of, of that stuff? Um, yes, I can see if there's a way for me to share that from the Dropbox. Okay. Yeah, because I kind of want to... Because, like, it, it, it sucks. My mom's been doing this my whole life, you know? Like, it sucks. Like, my mom's almost gotten me killed multiple times. And it, yeah. you know, I just want it to stop, you know? Some of the information about um, your working with Jonathan and all of them, just sort of see where we're at in the case. And then when I have an update, I will let you know and obviously you can reach out as well um, if you want to discuss more on sort of what's going on with your case. Right. Um, so, what's the, the plan so far? So, the plan is to try to negotiate your case down to either a dismissal or, in the alternative, some sort of misdemeanor with time served. Um, because of how much time you are already in custody on this case. And if we can't do that, then, you know, obviously there is a felony probation offer on the table, although, you know, as we discussed, you know, there's a lot of reasons why that might not be something that you want to take. Um, and so we can talk, you know, if we are at the point where they won't dismiss or give us some sort of lesser plea about whether we want to go to trial or whether we want to take the whatever offer is on the table at that point. And then we can just sort of go from there in terms of entering either a not guilty plea or entering into a plea agreement at your next hearing. Um, okay. So if we were to go to, go to trial, what, what would be like the opening statement and stuff? So, you know, if we're going to trial the case, you know, obviously we would need time to prepare the exact details of the opening statement. The theme of the defense is going to be that you did not you know, we lead trying to, you know, induce fear in Brittany or her boyfriend. That you, you know, were just joking and that your intention was not uh, to harm them or to make them feel like they were going to be harmed. Um, you know, in terms of the burglary, the defense is even more straightforward that, you know, you had permission to be in the house and that you had not, you know, you did not unlawfully enter the house with an intent to commit a crime within that house. Um, so that is sort of big picture, what the defense would be, and then obviously the details of the opening statement will depend a little bit more about exactly what it is that's coming into evidence um, and sort of what we flesh out in terms of that story. Um, what about the disorderly conduct for, I don't know. So there's no disorderly conduct charge here, it's just two counts of burglary and two counts of menacing. I thought I had a fourth one. How are there two counts of burglary? It's four. It's, it's, it's two. It's because there are two different electric Oh, my mom and Walt? No, it's Brittany and her boyfriend. But it's not their house. So, it doesn't have to be their house necessarily for them to be um, the electric victim. I mean, for burglary. So, it, 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 Right, so for the burglary, it's that you unlawfully entered the home, is what they're alleging, um, with the intent to commit a crime, and that while in there, you then it uh, Dylan and Brittany. So there's one count for Dylan and one count for Brittany, for both the burglary and the menace. Oh, so my mom and stepdad aren't even victims in this case? Well, they sort of are and they're not. Like, they are, they're kind of victims on the burglary because they're saying that you unlawfully entered that building. 
um, but they're not restrictive on the benefit. And the reason that the counselor comes is because of Dawn and Bernie, not your parents. So, did they press charges? Well, some of them are like, 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 basically, once the police report gets filed, the prosecution is the one that decides what charges get pressed. Oh. Okay, um. Is there going to be like a cross examining part? We would call it examine all the witnesses who testified to me. Who would all the witnesses be? Well, there's about 10 people who are endorsed witnesses, um, and most of them are police officers who responded um, to the scene, and then Brittany, Dylan, your mom, and your stepdad. Okay. Um, is there a plan to appeal? So I'd be able to get my car back? If there are something held for evidence in the case, then yes, you should be able to get it back on the front of the case. Is it? I don't know that, whether it's being held or not. I didn't think that it was, but I, you know, that's basically something that we can look into. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool to find out if I could get my car back. I mean, I don't exactly, you know, I was using that, you know. Um, so, to dismiss the charges, it's got to be six months of a non-guilty plea. Um, did you argue any of the evidence to uh, exclude any of the evidence? So that's what would happen once they enter a non-guilty plea. So once the case gets set for trial, we file motions to exclude evidence, and then the This is all done. Is anything going to be done with the suspicion of my mother's mental illness or anything like that to keep my family from doing this to me again? That's a good question. That's not something that I have any power over, um, so I not something I can give you advice on, unfortunately. So the judge would do that? police harassment from happening to me anymore because it's been happening my whole life. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. Could you find out? No, I represent you in a criminal case. I don't have the capacity to, you know, launch investigations into police patterns and practices. That's a completely different area of the law. So I would have to hire a lawyer in order to get police harassment to stop being put on me? Yeah, if you felt that you have legal standing against the police, then you would have to hire a civil attorney for that. Well, I don't have any money. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't have the capacity to do that. Um, I 
know, I mean, some of them do take those cases pro bono. That's the only information that I can get. Well, also, nobody will talk to me about this. Everybody's ignoring yeah. everything I'm, I'm trying to get help for. They have my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody says it's not their job, someone else's job. They pass the buck, give me a runaround. Yet, I still have the police knocking down my walls like a zombie horde every six months over noise complaints and welfare checks made by my mom. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing's going to stop that. I'll just be back in your jail after this is done over some other stupid shit. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I can't tell you that. I don't know. Well, I just... I don't know. I, I, can, I don't know. I just don't understand you guys. I can tell you the company on the case. I can't tell you anything about systemic practices or what could happen in the future. That's just not something that I have any information about. Well, I just don't understand how nobody would do anything about all these serious crimes, but the second a BB gun comes into mind, you know, I'm being treated like a felon. Yeah. I, I don't understand how you guys say that you uphold the law, but I tell you, oh, there's a human trafficking ring over there, but nobody cares. Or there's a trap house over there where I was date raped in, but nobody cares. But the second I wave around a BB gun, I get the whole world down on me. I don't get it. What's the point? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I think it's very unfair. Well, it's not unfair. It's illegal. It's unconstitutional. It's against the Geneva Convention. It's war crimes is what it is. Okay. So nobody's going to stop the police harassment. Nobody's going to do anything. How are you guys going to give me back my life after this is over? Do you have a time machine? I'm a little bit confused about what your question is asking right now. Well, after all this is over with, and after the appeal or before the appeal, and somebody finally realizes that a BB gun has nothing to do with anything relevant, you know, after the case is dropped, then what? If the case is, if you get a not guilty during the trial, then the case is over, and there's no criminal penalty that they could give you for this. That's what would happen. If there is a guilty verdict, then there would be a criminal sentence uh, and conviction that we could appeal. So, if it's found not guilty, what about the year that I spent in a holding cell? I know. It's, again, it's very unfair. It's not something that you, that you, it's not about a year that you can get back. Um, but the not guilty firm would end the case against you. So no harm, no foul. That's it. Well, I don't believe that that's true, but that is, you know, that's what will happen. They just drop the case and say, oh, sorry, and that's it. Yep. Well, that's tyranny. That doesn't sound very justifiable. Yeah, it's very unfair. It, and it happens all the time. Somebody will be in jail for, you know, months or even longer waiting for trial on a case, and then they get not guilty at trial, and they are released from the jail, but they don't get any compensation or anything like that for the time they were in jail. Well, I was looking around and stuff, and it says I am supposed to get 20 grand a year in jail. If I'm found not guilty. So there's no law that says that. Um, you can do civil losses if you can make out a case for false arrest or malicious prosecution. Those are very difficult claims to sustain based on the way that the law is structured. Um, and you'd have to retain a different attorney for assistance in that if that's something you would want to do. So that's not considered false imprisonment? It's not, no. What is false imprisonment? So false arrest is a tort. It's separate from the criminal legal system. Um, and it basically means that the police didn't have probable cause uh, to arrest you and you would have to show that they didn't have, um, that you were held without probable cause. Um, again, it's very difficult to, uh, to sustain a claim of false arrest. Okay. Um. 
What does malpractice mean? Well, malpractice is a complicated area. Basically, if you're trying to raise a malpractice claim against, like, what do you mean, not, like, I, I need more information about that question. You know, I'm just asking what malpractice means. I don't know what it means. So it's basically alleging that there was some sort of professional negligence against you by some sort of professional entrusted to, uh, to provide certain professional service. So, like, for instance, the deputies, the doctors, the mental health staff, all that? You could try to claim medical malpractice against one or more of the, the staff. Um, again, they tend to have pretty broad immunity by virtue of their position uh, that protects them from most lawsuits, which is a very unfair thing, but that is unfortunately the way that the law is. So, you guys are too big to fail. Oh, I'm sorry, not you guys. They're too big to fail, is what you're saying. They can just do whatever they want. I mean, under the way the law is structured now, yeah, they have very broad protection from accountability for their actions. <laughs> okay. So, attempted murder and manslaughter isn't as big of an issue as a BB gun? Well, I certainly don't agree that that is true, but there is something called qualified immunity, um, which shields a lot of public officials from lawsuits over uh, what they do in the course of their job. Colorado has limited it somewhat, but there is, it is still difficult for there to be, um, you know, for there to be lawsuits against officers. Well, I'm not looking for a lawsuit. I'm looking for justice. Right. I mean, am I right? Vinny, I don't really know what you're asking me here. I don't know how else I can tell you that this is not my area of law. I'm not allowed to give you legal advice outside of my area of legal expertise, so I, just, I really cannot advise you on this. Well, I'm just trying to study this stuff. I mean, I think it's all stuff that has happened to me, and I think it's relevant to the case, don't you? Well, I certainly think that the way you were treated was terrible. Um, you know, it's not something that is going to come in as evidence in this case. And in terms of getting any sort of accountability or justice, that is a completely different area of law that, again, I am not allowed to give you advice about. But you're my lawyer. I'm your lawyer on this criminal case, but I don't represent you in any sort of civil matters related to how you were treated in the jail. There's something called scope of representation where I'm only allowed to represent you insofar as these criminal charges are concerned and not on collateral matters like civil accountability for jail treatment. Well, what about malpractice outside of the jail, like malpractice for anything else? I'm also not allowed to represent you or give you advice about malpractice. I don't think that's true, but what about ethnic violations? What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I don't know what ethnic violations mean. I was hoping you could tell me. I don't, I've never heard of ethnic violations. Ethnic means like a racial group, so you'd be saying that there's a violation of some sort of... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I misread it. Ethic violations. Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm talking about. I have a duty of professional conduct. Those are the rules of ethical conduct that are set out for lawyers. And one of those rules is that I'm only allowed to represent you within the scope of your representation. So it means I'm only allowed to represent you on your criminal case. I can't give you advice about other matters like civil lawsuits. You would have to get another attorney to give you advice about that. Um. Well, what about evasion, negligence, avoidance? What, is that? what does that stuff mean? I don't know how to answer that question. Those, those are certainly words that have meaning, but I don't know what it is you're asking me when you use those words. Um, legally speaking, what would negligence mean? So 
negligence is a legal standard that can be relevant in a criminal case, although it's not relevant in your case. Negligence is a standard in tort that basically means that there is a standard of conduct that somebody had to uphold and that they failed to uphold that standard of conduct. They didn't use reasonable care in their, uh, in their, in upholding their duty. In a legal context, criminal negligence means that uh, you didn't act intentionally, but you negligently uh, acted in such a way that had a, a criminal uh, impact. That's not relevant in your case. Oh, okay. Um, so what does, like, uh, avoidance mean? I mean, avoidance means a lot of different things in the law, so you'd have to give me that word in some sort of context for me to tell you exactly what it's referring to. Oh, well, what does coercion mean? Coercion means that you're basically pressuring and threatening somebody to do something. Okay. Um... What does assertion mean? Assertion means that you're saying that something happened. What does extortion mean? Well, extortion is a concept potentially in the federal law, um, which means that you're trying to get something by threatening someone. Doesn't coercion mean like, uh, People working together to fix the case? Not necessarily, no. What, what, is, what is that one? Like when the DA and the judge... Collusion. Huh? That would be collusion. Collusion, that's the word, okay. I need to write that down. Um... most of these, so I'll try and find the ones that you can. Um, unnecessary suffering, that's not your stuff. Degrading treatment, that's not you. Um, What is the First Amendment? So, the First Amendment is a constitutional amendment relating to free speech. It means that the government cannot make a law that abridges freedom of speech, press, assembly, uh, or petition the government. It also has free access of religious components. Oh, I thought that was the Fast and Speedy Trial one. Is that, which one is the fast and speedy trial one? Hello? Fast and Speedy Trial. I can't hear if you're saying anything. Which amendment is the Fast and Speedy Trial? Hello? Thank you. 